I want to do a few examples where we have series that potentially have both positive and negative terms and we need to just determine if we have absolute convergence, conditional convergence, or divergence. And here is the first example. We see this series is alternating because if you take absolute value of the kth term, we get one over k ln k. And with the minus one to the k, we see exactly this is alternating. Now, so we could have absolute convergence, conditional convergence, or divergence. How do we figure out which one? I personally would quickly look at the terms and see if they're going to zero. In this case, yes, right? These terms are going to zero. And so this tells me, well, I'm not gonna use the term test. If you can't use the term test, which is typically what I always look for first in a series, then I might ask myself, does it converge absolutely? And, and, and if I know the answer to that, then I am done. So let's look at that in this case. Does this converge absolutely? Meaning, let's consider this series. This is the sum absolute value of AK. If this series converges, then we are done. We know the answer. We know it converges absolutely. Okay, well, how are we gonna figure this out? Um, what I see is integral test because I have a L and K and I see it's derivative, right? So let's, so let's notice f of x is 1 over x ln x is, um, is positive decreasing and continuous on 2 to infinity. Okay, moreover, we have the integral from two to infinity of one over x ln x dx. This is a limit as b goes to infinity, integral from two to b, one over x ln x dx. This is substitution, right? Where if we want to integrate this, u is ln x du is one over x dx. And seeing this in my series is what really made me think of the integral test. I saw the ln x, I saw, as I mentioned, its derivative in the function. And then, for instance, I could change my bounds when x equals two, u equals natural log two. And when x equals b, u is natural log of b. Okay, so now we're ready to or to convert, I should say, to an integral of u. Maybe I will do this here. This is an integral. Oh, I need a limit. This is a limit. As b goes to infinity, I have an integral ln2 to ln b of 1 over u du limit as b goes to infinity, now I can integrate, evaluate, I get, well, it's going to be ln absolute value ln b minus ln absolute value ln 2. Okay, now, well, okay, look, we take a limit as b goes to infinity, natural law grows without bound, and then we take a natural log of that growing without bound, this is here, diverges. What we see, therefore, is by the integral test, this I'll write it like this because it's the absolute value 
of my series that I am interested in diverges. Now, I am not finished with this problem. Maybe I will add that over here. So this diverges as we have shown. Okay. Well, now let's do an alternating series test. Okay, well, absolute value of AK equals one over K L and K, and absolute value AK plus one less than or equal to absolute value AK. Why is this? Well, this is decreasing. The denominator is growing. The numerator is fixed. We have a decreasing function. So this is true. Moreover, if we take a limit as k goes to infinity of this, we get a limit as k goes to infinity of 1 over k ln k. This is 0 because the denominator is growing without bound. OK, so by the alternating series test, we see that this alternating series minus 1 to the k over k ln k converges. But now we can, now we can finish the question. The question was, does it converge absolutely, conditionally, or diverges? We showed by the integral test it does not converge absolutely, but it does converge. So therefore, we have conditional convergence in this example. Okay, this is how this series converges conditionally. Here's our next example. Well, if you look at this, it's not alternating. It's not alternating. In fact, what do we know about the sine of k? Sine of k is always less than or equal to 1, greater than or equal to minus 1. And so if we add minus 2 to this, we get minus 3 is less than or equal to minus 2 plus sine k is less than or equal to minus 1. This series is always negative. Okay? Okay, well, <laughs> what can we say? Well, let's take the absolute value and figure out what's happening. The absolute value of AK, which would be the absolute value of minus 2 plus sine K over K cubed. Well, in absolute value, what's the biggest this can be? Well, it would be, this would be less than or equal to 3 over K cubed. And it's always positive, like this. I mean, if you wanted to, before you even started looking at the absolute value, think about the terms, right? This is what we did in the last one and what I usually do. The terms, even though sine is between um, minus 1 and 1, and this numerator is between these two numbers, the denominator is growing without bound. The terms go to 0, so term test tells you nothing. Okay, now absolute value. The absolute value here, look, this is setting us up for comparison test because this series, if we put absolute values, is less than or equal to this constant times 1 over k cubed. So let me now start finishing the problem. So notice here the sum k equals 1 to infinity of 3 over k cubed converges as it is a constant times a convergent p-series. p-series here, p is 3, strictly bigger than 1. Okay, wonderful converges. And term by term, we are 
in absolute value less than. So by the comparison test, k equals one to infinity absolute value of minus two plus sine of k over k cubed converges. Okay, well, this is the absolute value of this series. Immediately, we know the answer that this series converges absolutely. Our series. Which is minus two plus sine k over k cubed converges absolutely okay this is another alternating series okay because the absolute value is this part and we do alternate in sign okay we alternate in sign between plus and minus the absolute value here is this okay it's alternating now we have to decide converges absolutely, converges conditionally, or diverges. But again, briefly look at the terms, see if they go to zero. Um, don't let the minus one to the k fool you. Look at this, right? The limit as k goes to infinity, absolute value of a k, well, as k goes to infinity, square root is continuous. You could bring the limit underneath. 4 over k goes to 0, so you would get the square root of 1, which is 1. Okay, this is the limit, but this is just absolute value. Now if I actually do this, what happens here? Here is what I will claim does not exist. And what's happening with this as a sequence? This part is going to one, this part is alternating. So as you go, maybe I will draw it over here, as you get far out, maybe I won't do, yeah, okay, I'll put an axis here. If you're way out, far out, this is going back and forth like this. Very close to one, okay? So here's one, minus one, and this is what the sequence looks out, looks for very large k, which, this is oscillating. The limit does not exist. Okay, so this limit, this is the limit of the terms, does not exist. Well, okay, the limit is non-zero or does not exist. We know the answer. So here by the term test, my series k equals one to infinity minus one to the k square root one plus four over k diverges. This is why I check this first because if you get divergence from the term test, this is a quick glance to look at to see if the terms go to zero. And if they do not diverges, then you don't even have to worry about the absolute value or alternating series test. Okay, you know immediately what happens to the series, it diverges. Let's do one more example, which is this, and again, this is an alternating series. Let's ask ourselves, again, our first pass, do the terms go to zero? Well, sure, if you look at the absolute value of AK, we get one over the square root of three times k factorial plus four. And this definitely goes to zero because the denominator is growing and the numerator is fixed. And if you have something that goes to zero and a minus one to the k is multiplied by it, that also goes to zero as we have discussed. Okay, so the term test tells us nothing. When I see factorials, ratio test, okay? And the nice thing about the ratio test is the conclusion. The conclusion of the ratio test is absolute convergence, okay? So let's look at 
We will use the ratio test here because I see factorials. Let's look at AK plus one over AK and absolute value. Okay, well, I can disregard minus one to the K because of the absolute values. I get one over the square root of three K plus one factorial plus four divided by one over the square root of three times k factorial plus four, okay? Now I'm going to invert, multiply. In my numerator, I have here, well, maybe I'll do it in two steps. I have this, three k factorial plus four, the denominator, I have 3k plus 1 factorial plus 4. And you notice here, this is all one big square root. 3k factorial plus 4 over 3k plus 1 factorial plus 4. Now, if I think about taking a limit as k goes to infinity, uh, Okay, this is gonna be a challenge because underneath the square root, you see the numerator is growing without bound, the denominator is growing without bound, but one thing that we can do is we can divide by the highest thing that we see, which is here. It's a k plus one factorial. If I do this uh -uh, equals, what do I get? Okay, here, I've made this comment before, I will make it again. K plus one factorial is K plus one times K factorial. So if I take K factorial over K plus one factorial, I get one over K plus one. Okay, this is what's gonna make our world wonderful. Because look, this is gonna be three over K plus one. And then I have four over K plus one factorial divided by, this is just three, and then I have four over K plus one factorial. And now this is something I'm prepared to take a limit of. You see, there's no L'Hopital for factorials because this is not a function we have a derivative of, but the sort of techniques of dividing by the highest thing you can see, it works here. Now let's take a limit. As k goes to infinity, absolute value, ak plus one over ak, this equals, well, I've already simplified this to a place I am ready to take a limit. It's this big square root. Oh, maybe I'll make it a little bigger. It's a big square root. And in my numerator, I have three over k plus one. And then I have four over k plus one factorial divided by, I have just this number three and then four over k plus one factorial, okay? Again, I'll make the square root even larger. Now it, now it covers everything. Well, this is when we realize that we're gonna be able to calculate the limit because, okay, technically I would move the limit underneath the square root, but this term goes to zero, this term goes to zero, this term goes to zero, so to zero, to zero, and this one to zero. So we are left with not zero over zero because there's a three down here, right? We are left with zero, the square root of zero over three, which is zero. This number is less than one. So by the ratio test, My series sum k equals one to infinity minus one to the k over the square root of three k factorial plus four converges absolutely. I'll put that here, converges absolutely.
okay? That's an exclamation point. <laughs> it converges absolutely. Because we have figured absolute convergence, we're finished. We don't need to do an alternating series test, for example, because this is much stronger. We have figured out that it converges absolutely.